and that Danny Hunter. Ooh. What a ah. cracking start. <laughs> Here we go on uh, Podfella Saints on the 2nd of December 2021. And uh, one of us is already name dropping. Good evening, Lee Wood. David, Jacob, how are we? We're well. I think, well, I say we're well. Are you well, Jake? I think so. Thank you very much for asking. Can't tell by looking at you. Um, we got a couple of games to review before we get on to a couple of previews as well. The first one, the camera up there somewhere, that's where we were last Saturday. Marsh Lane, Oxford City, FA Trophy. Uh, a 4-1 win for the Saints. Um, we predicted, or we, we, we sort of guessed last Thursday, that Ian might tinker with the side and give some starts to players who haven't been starting recently. And he did that. And why doesn't he start with that side every week? 4-1 <laughs> win. <laughs> I have to say, I did not see this coming at all. As no I one did. As no I one follow, did. Following the updates, I honestly couldn't believe it. it uh, fair play to the lads that came in and, and Ian took a gamble. And it worked really well. And Oxford, you know, no mugs, decent side. I know they had a couple of changes, of course. But you have to, have to play against a team that's out there. And the Saints just put them to the sword. And I have to say, well done, lads. Lee, I guess you've seen the highlights. Yeah, I mean, we asked for a response. We sat here last week and we asked for a response and we got that in droves. I thought the Oxford defending was very generous, I have to say. Um, but apart from that, what a result. And yeah, we played really well. Um, and that then just builds confidence, doesn't it, going into the what was the Tunbridge game. Although I do wish we'd have saved a few of those goals for that match as well. But yeah, I mean, we asked for a response. We got it. We got some... We got a new set of legs in the middle of the park as well to sort of try and test them out because we're going to need those squad players, Dave. Uh, but yeah, good win, mate. Really good win. Yeah, it's a very good win. Uh, performance uh, certainly was was not a four-one memorable win, if you know what I mean, where you're banging away searching for goals. I mean, I, I tell you players. what, mate, you're a hard man to please, aren't you? Hey? <laughs> <laughs> I go see hey? football and judge the football. <laughs> um, we, we were clinical. Um, Sean Jeffers clinical with that first goal striking it off a defender nicely and then the, one of the others was a penalty um, but, but his other goal was a good one now, we, we performed solidly as a team Oxford actually probably had more of the ball I would say they used it badly but they did have some good chances and they could have given a much better account than, it, than they did but they'd only lost twice before that game all season so it is a terrific result can I just ask as well, though? Sorry, sorry, Jake. That's right. Ian is a man of habit and he's loyal to his players. Does the fact that he's now got some new sort of players coming in and performing well, will that maybe give him a few headaches coming up to the cup game and maybe beyond? Cool. I think the last thing is a headache, it's a pleasure, isn't it? Oh, well, yeah, but you know. <laughs> I know what you mean. Um, I would have thought he's had that team for Bournemouth in his mind pretty much since we got through from the last round it's up to other players to force their way into it now Romeo Akinola it'd be a surprise if he started on Monday but he set up three of the goals on uh, last Saturday and he even had a shot on target Who's the last one um, so, uh, it, that's what a player's got to do they've got to go in and perform like that and oh. your kids are still awake Lee um, Ellen doesn't up. agree <laughs> uh, and, and, and one or two of us maybe didn't hit those highs but it, it was a, a solid team performance one player who I thought did play well didn't set any goals up Michael Clark it's just like he was last season well that's that's why we wanted the changes that we did because we can players give them a chance to prove themselves and they say Romy Aknola surprise again free free goal involvement <laughs> Don't think we expected that. And yet, Michael Clark, you know, players like that desperately need minutes, don't they? And it's good they got it. And, you know, honestly, for Clark, there could easily be a, a position in this Saints side the way things are going with injuries at the minute in a couple of games. So, but I mean, this season's obviously been dominated by the FA Cup. And it's just nice to see us progress in the trophy, actually, to be honest. It feels so long that we've, seen, we've had any sort of run in it. It's just nice to get a good, comfortable win. Hey, Jake. You're not, you're not suggesting for one minute that we're influencers on, on, on the team dynamic in any way, do you? No, don't be silly. <laughs> uh, the FA Trophy, how important is it? Well, 
there is a lot of kudos getting to Wembley in that course. And so far from win from winning that one game the other day, what does that get us? Uh, Three thousand seven hundred and fifty quid. So uh, as we know this season, money comes to money. <laughs> a pocket change these days for us. It is, but um, Sean Jeffers, we know how good he, how clinical he can be. I don't know if you've seen the interview with the Tunbridge manager after the game, but everybody's aware of him now. And another three goals last Saturday, he's just permanently in the spotlight. But Well, we spoke about this again, didn't we? And it's got to be in the back of Ian's, Ian's mind as well. And also, it's probably in the back of the player's mind because there's, there's a reason why he's had 15 clubs, you know? And the club have never stood in his... The club have never stood in anyone's way if they want to progress their career. Um, and I don't think Sean Jeffers is any different. That said, I actually genuinely believe he likes it here. You know, there's, there's a really good team ethos around him now. He's got good players around him. The fans love him. Uh, we love him. Uh, and I, I think it's going to take something really special to prize him away from, from us. Well, I think it will do, Lee, because he's 29. He's not going to go football league now. If he goes to the Conference National, that's full time. I don't know what he's, he does for yeah, The problem, though, Tavs, is that quality strikers who are banging in goals, they're like rocking horse shit, mate. They don't just sit there and grow on trees. And obviously, no, but how many sort of times you would cry out for a striker who scored all of these goals before it's even Christmas. You know, and there's only a handful around, mate, at this level. And he can do it in the conference. He's done that. So what now? What price is there? But at the minute, he's our player. We don't need to sell him. This, this, is, this is the benefit now. Whereas in the past, we've had players, good, good players, uh, who've had to move on. I'm thinking more but, from his point of view, at that age, is he going to risk whatever career he's got now for yeah. maybe a couple of years at a higher level and then find, well, where I'm on the scrapping now, I've got to go back down again. Well, let's hope we don't have to find out because, as I say, he's our player. Uh, he's one of our own, apparently. Um, but he's a really good player and he loves it here and we love him being here. And you know what, mate? I think he fits really well in Ian's tactics and his side. Um, so, as, as you say, why would he jeopardise that to chase a pound note for the last few years of his career? We saw two more of our own last Saturday, um, Joey Schifano and uh, Harvey Bradbury. Talk and, about uh, chasing a pound note. Hello, fellas, all right? Yeah, how's, how's things going down there, Joe? We stopped scorer. Oh, he's got uh, seven or seven or eight now. Uh, nice little dive in there. We gave him a space to do it, and he and he took it, which is what he do. Get in a size six yard box. That is where Joe will he, pounce. He's 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 a poacher. He knows where the back of the net is. But you have to say when he when he left us, he wanted to be moving up the league, didn't he? Get back to the football league. He is. It seems at least anyway that time at Haven did him no good at all. And he's plateauing at the minute. So hopefully he does kick on. It'd be great for him because he, he seemed like a lovely lad. But as you say, he's not really gone to the places he wants to. And it's probably the same for Harvey Bradley, actually, isn't it? So, tales but It's of... not about them knowing anymore, is it more? No. You know, it's about, no. it's about Sean Jeffers and Goddard and Bender and Noble and all the players that we've got. Joe chose to leave these boys behind. So now we've got yeah. to concentrate on the players we have got. And we've got some fantastic players. We do indeed. There was another one of our own on the bench at Oxford on Saturday, uh, Elliot Benyon, who's now Ooh. now 34 years old, getting to the veteran stage. <laughs> what a player, though. Bench. Right. What, uh, what was the phrase you used earlier, Lee, to describe off air, describe Tuesday's match at Tunbridge Angels? I can't what? remember. What was it? It wasn't flattering. Anyway, was it not? We okay. oh, Tuesday, Tuesday, we were down in Kent, Tunbridge Angels, Nielsen, Auburn City, Neil. Um, it was dreadful. No two ways about it. Absolutely awful game. <laughs> I've had um, I've had uh, better evenings. <laughs> what time did you get home, Jake? About, about one a.m. So it was re it was really worth the trip. Thank, why thanks. Did it, as always. Why did it take you so long to get back? What did well, you do? The tra well, we caught the train back from Tombridge, and then the train we were meant to get from London Bridge, the last one from there, got cancelled. So we had to walk from London Bridge to Blackfriars along the Thames. So why didn't you, you go, go in the? In, in the Dave Taverner van of love, what, what, why didn't you get the, the free lift? Because that is, that is cherished. That is, that's, you know, that's saved for special occasions. I mean, to be yeah. fair, fellas, Tunbridge was, was, it was pretty bad going there once a season as it is, let alone twice. So, yeah. Didn't talk it, me through it. Right. The game, we needed to win, really, because we've got to stay on the snapping away at the other top sides there. That is, it's got to be our priority this season. We have to make up a look nice in the trophy cabinet, but the league's a priority. Um, 
We didn't deserve a point. Um, they had far the better chances. Ricky Modest, he's still a wonderful player out on the right wing. He put two crosses in, and now they failed to take advantage of either of them. God knows. But one player who really did emerge with credit, I thought, Tuesday, and I'm not going to pronounce his name right, um, Konya Boyce Clark. I thought that was his best game for the club. He played a couple of ones on ones, and uh, he, he bossed his six yard box. Uh, yeah, I, I do agree. I mean, first of all, yeah, Tom Bridge would definitely better side although even then like a few couple of moments they had like two throw in the road straight out packing it out couldn't pass at times it was a dreadful game as you say really Combridge deserved the win probably but did anyone really deserve the win on the evening mm. they say goalkeeper really impressed his distribution in the first 20 minutes half hour was a little bit shaky but after that he grew into the game made some good saves I said his ability to really come out and claim crosses really impressed me, actually. A couple of occasions did really well. And another man who takes credit from that game for me, Callum Adebayi. He was missing against Hungsford. We discussed that. And he came back in against Tombridge. And I thought he didn't put anything wrong. And he is a rock at the back. And he has really grown. And I think he's part of the reason why we didn't actually lose in the end on Tuesday night. He was Ian's man of the match as well, quite understandably. Yeah, and that's it's amazing what happens, isn't it, when you stick with a, a, a centre-back partnership that actually can play each other and have been doing pretty well with each other. So, you know, it was a clean sheet, at least. The positives. It's only Romeo set those three goals up Saturday, so he obviously caught the eye with those things. And Tuesday, back into his shell a bit, wasn't he? He was. But he wasn't the only one. It's not picking no. on him. Let's get this right. No, absolutely not. And I, I, again, doesn't didn't have to be Akinola, but I would have liked to have seen Ian take a bit of a gamble by bringing someone like Liam Soul on. I mean, he brought Bailey, Bailey Brown on, I don't know what minute, Dave, you probably have it there in your notes. And he, he came on and he, he was pretty much stuck up between midfield and centre forward at times. And it was all a bit, just seemed a little bit desperate, really. Sort of just keep the ball up the pitch, get it away from our defence almost at times. So, yeah, it would have been nice to throw someone like Liam Sol on a bit more attacking, just let him go out at Tombridge defence as the attacking players really weren't sort of linking together at all. They kept the equation that the, the Oxford game, I think Ian was now sort of looking at small mercies, just sort of trying to get a point back on the board in the league, considering the, the, the sort of two defeats we've had today. I think that's that's definitely possible. And I don't know if the players or what, but I don't know if some of the players are thinking about Monday night, to be honest with you, maybe. I mean, yeah, so. Yeah, exactly. So well, It's know, interesting what you say about Liam Sol, because um, Ian's finally stuck him on in the 90th minute, which didn't leave him a lot of time. Now, we know Liam hasn't set the world alight so far this season. Um, it, it, but you look at him, he looks a footballer. He looks he's perfect shape, size, everything about him perfect. It's not working so far for him. But what Ian wanted him to do, when he came in at chance in the last minute, Jay, you remember, it came in from the left wing yeah. and maybe the angle was just too tight. Ian wanted him to smack it for goal, but he chipped it to the back post and it was just too long for Dave Dijoux to get on. It was mind-boggling. Either go for goal or drill it in low. Why has he put it in the air on the back post? Was, I know the Snowbans, I think, social media accounts after put, put a picture of Dave saying, oh, inches away from... And I was like... No, 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 it was nowhere near at all. So very optimistic. But yeah, it was that was a chance really probably. Zane Banton had a decent attempt that the keeper saved well. Um, but yeah, Liam Soul, I think he probably deserves more of a chance than he got on Tuesday night. As you said, what, a minute or two? Um, but yeah, it'd just be nice to throw something on and change the game a little bit. But it just didn't happen. It's interesting listening to the interview by um, Steve McKim, the Tom Bridge manager, and the respect we're getting from other clubs at the moment, because the FA Cup really does throw you into the spotlight. All right, our league form's been pretty good up to the last few weeks as well, and clubs are very aware of us, obviously very aware of Sean Jeffers, and that makes us a target, doesn't it, as we know? I don't mind that, though, Dave, because, honest, mate, we've earned that respect now. How many seasons after season after season have we been not been getting the credit we actually deserve? And now, OK, yes, the cup match has put us in the shot window, but our league form is where it's at, mate. Our league form is what everyone is looking at um, and the goals we're scoring and, and, and the players we have. You know, fine, 
we're getting the respect because we we are due it, mate. Honestly. Yeah. Right. Um, a few injuries, a few knocks come from that game. We'll come on to those in a minute when we uh, preview another game. But uh, the win at Oxford City has earned us a tie at home to Braintree Town in the fourth round of the FA Trophy. So that's a, <laughs> that's a bye to the fifth round, isn't it? That's oh, romance. Romance. Oh, they, they, oh. I mean, the glamour, isn't it? I mean, you know, they say it, it's a winnable tie. That's, I'm sure the Saints will be happy with it. Braintree, they're coming around ever so slightly. But, yeah, got to fancy ourselves. One question about Tuesday night, Dave. Did you, um, did you have to pay to get in? Did you attend the original fixture as well? Yes. Was there like, did Tombridge not like a, attempt at any point to sort of rip off a people who bought for the original tie? No, because when Careful, going... Tavs, this is a this this is like a loaded question here somewhere. I'm pretty uh, sure. It, it usually is from Emily. Um, no, once you get past half time, <laughs> um, tough cookie. Oh, interesting. It was a genuine question. Ah, okay. No, no, that's it. They were quite entitled to rip us off. Aren't <laughs> <laughs> you? The, the admission there, what was it? 14 quid or something? 15, I 15, think. was it? I paid yeah. by card, I can't remember. Because um, I mean, we'll take cash, but we could pay by card. Um, whereas on Saturday at Oxford City, that was interesting. Um, 14 quid on the gate, 12 quid, quid if you paid in advance. I mean, where, have I heard, quid... where have I heard that idea before? Well, making it cheaper online. It's not going to catch on around these parts, <laughs> is it? <laughs> um, oh, no, don't do it. Talking of that Oxford game, it didn't like it was the uh, most well attended uh, afternoon out, Dave. I mean, what, was there 100 people there? I can't find the attendance anywhere. God no. knows how many websites I've looked at, including ours, but you don't, don't expect the information on that. Um, you, it's not on Oxford ones either. It's not on the FA site. It's not anywhere, uh, um, the, which the is annoying. But John Jones said um, there were 18 city supporters there on Saturday. Tuesday, I think we actually got above 20, didn't we? And this, uh, is, hmm. this is a club that had 4,100 down the park the other week. Where are you, boys? <laughs> I think there's probably 30, 40 at Tombridge, possibly, if we're, if we're yeah. being kind. But I'd say, I'd say well done to everyone that went down to Oxford and Tombridge as well. But, I mean, both, especially Oxford, a very chilly day in that win. So well done to everyone that made the trip. Who's a creep, any Lee? All those fans, mate, they're saving themselves for Monday. Yeah. Yes. Glory, <laughs> glory days. <laughs> glory days. Right, uh, fixtures on the 14th of December, we're due to be playing Concord Rangers, or we're playing Hartford Town. Does anybody know the situation nowadays? It's, it's on the fixture list on the website, it says Concord. Um, on the BBC website, it says it's postponed. It's still on the Conference National. Of course, the website itself has never actually said in the pre separate piece, we got that game. It's only a week on next Tuesday. It'd be nice to know what we're doing, wouldn't it? Mm. Pre pre COVID, um, the Hearts County Cup ties took precedence, didn't they, over the league? So yeah. I don't know if that's ruled out. I, I presume it still is. Um, but as I say it'd be good, it'd be good to get some clarity over that. So you know, Saints fans kind of know want to know which game to go to. <laughs> Hartford away or Concord away? It's a tough choice, isn't it? I will tell you what, you go to one, we'll go to the other, and then we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. Um, it's preview time now, I guess, isn't it? Oh, we haven't got a game Saturday. There's nothing to preview. Right, see you next week. <laughs> what to do it's finally here. Saturday? It's <laughs> finally. What are you doing, Jake? I'm. I think I'm going up to Birmingham for the Christmas market. I think. What What, what are you doing, Lee? Well, there there was talk about going to watch Cambridge against Exeter. I know. Um, I think I can make it. Yeah, Tabs is going to watch some godforsaken obscure. No. Dave will be at Arlesy Halfton. It's a local game for him, isn't it? Really? I haven't looked at any games yet, actually. Yes, you <sighs> bloody have. Don't no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't feel so, like FA wishing. Cup then, fellas. Let's, right, I suppose we Monday. should discuss it, I guess. 6th of December 2021, FA Cup second round, Boreham oh. versus St Albans City. Oh, God, Jake's throwing a wobbly again. He's and, been drinking um, bleach for the last two hours. <laughs> Right, come on then, who wants to go first? Second time we played him in the FA Cup, the first one didn't go well. <laughs> no, no, it didn't. didn't. It's finally here. It's finally here. The game has been hanging over our head for the good part of a month. It's finally here. I'm glad. Because now, you know, we can have our extra five minutes in the sun, if you like. Um, 
uh, it's going to be tough because I actually generally think that that Forest Green underestimate us a little bit. Bournemouth won't won't sort of give us that honour. Uh, it's going to be absolutely a buzzing atmosphere. You know, people have. Uh, I went to a Chamber of Commerce uh, award, uh, sorry, dinner, and everyone's asking, "Have you got? Have you got your ticket?" Atmosphere. I've got my ticket. It's going to be great. I'm bringing my friends. I'm bringing this, and everyone's going to be there, and it's going to be absolutely fantastic. A real good advert for the club and how far we've come, certainly in terms of our fan base and the appeal that our players have now provided for us. Um, in terms of the actual game itself, I think it's going to be really, really tough, tough to call. Um, we've got some good players. We've got some good players. They've got some excellent players. Scott Bowden, for me, concerns me. He's a fantastic striker. We're going to have to sort of keep him quiet. But ultimately, boys, I can't call it. I honestly can't. Yes, yeah, Scott Bowden, uh, nine goals in 19 <laughs> this season, top scorer. Um, then, like us, they got one top scorer away out in front. Then they've got, uh, just Reese has got five. But you know, no one is really banging in the goals uh, like we have with Sean. But look at that home record. They're unbeaten at home. They're second in the Conference National. Two defeats in 17 league games. Chucking a couple of cup ties unbeaten as well for good measure. Is this tougher than Forest Green Rovers because they're our neighbours? It's tougher. Yeah, it's tougher in so much that, you know, they know us, you know, their management knows our players and vice versa. Ian is obviously, you know, that's probably where he made his name as a manager at Boreham Wood. Um, no offence to Royston or Bulldog, wherever he was. Um, I think... We, we have lost to them on a regular basis. You know, it, I think they've got our number or they had our number, but this is, this is a new day. It's a new dawn and, and it's, it's a new opportunity for us now to really sort of kick on and prove to people that Forest Green wasn't a one-game wonder. Go on, Jake. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, match-wise, you know, you can look at their results this season. They grind them out. They... they they don't score loads of goals, but they really do. Um, similar to us in, in some ways. Um, and they are big, strong, smart side. I think they've got the, the oldest squad age in the average age in the National League, which is really saying something. I think it's 29, around that. Um, and they know all the tricks, everything, that they're going to play games on Saturday, on Monday with us. But, you know, we've just got to go there and apply and just do our best. And I was watching the highlights of their defeat to Tollyhole Moors back in September. And there is a potential for a clangor there, slight mistake, especially if you run at them. They don't look most mobile at the back. A couple of names you recognise, especially Nathan Ashmore, goalkeeper we've gone up against a few times. He's not played for quite a few weeks. No. <clears throat> and, and a certain Mr James Comley, who apparently they signed, much to the disgust of everyone on this podcast, seeing as we've been asking for the Saints to sign in for however long now. So, um, <laughs> and it's worth mentioning, of course, they haven't played for going on almost two weeks by the time this game takes place, which would be interesting to see how they react, how they plan. I know Luke Gerrard's been to most of our games. He was there on Tuesday night as well. Um, so we'll see. As Lee said, too tight to call. But when you've got over a 1,000 Saints fans invading Bournemouth on a Monday night, live on TV. Imagine the noise from that away end. Anything can happen. Magic of the cup. One thing I will say is that when the draw was announced, everyone's saying, oh, you know, it, OK, it's not glamorous, but it's a winnable tie. You know, we beat Forest Green and they're top of the... That's not how it works. Especially with Bournemouth, Dave and, and Jake, we've been there too many times before, mate. We've played them twice a year for sort of 10 years and it's that's not how it works. No. Um, I'm concerned about it because I think, you know, they know our players, whereas Forest Green was an unknown entity. You know, we were unknown to them, really. But, you know, weren't we? Born with players know ours inside out. Um, but that said, that said, you know, we've got to go there. It's 11 against 11 and we've got to give ourselves the best possible chance. I like the way you picked on one game against Holly Holm Moore's Goodness knows how many months ago, Jake, but they haven't repeated those frailties too often by the look of, looks of it. No, but then but then I'm sure that Bournemouth has been going through all our match videos and looking for any frailties they can spot in ours. So, you know, and Luke Jardy was at the I think, Dulwich game 
um, or Hunger, <laughs> Hungerford actually Dulwich yet, just hiding away in the corner by the York Road end, hiding away from all the Saints fans, didn't want to be spotted. So hopefully he enjoyed himself, hopefully he enjoyed himself on Tuesday, and I'm sure we'll enjoy ourselves on Monday. Well, yeah, we enjoyed Dulwich one, we let him fall. <laughs> uh, on Tuesday, um, Ian afterwards, he said uh, probably the person who enjoyed the game mo- most would have been Luke Garrard, as um, not many people from St Albans did. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's a nice bit of psychology, maybe, that. Um, what about our team? Ian's got problems. You've got Tom Bender who hasn't played for ages. He had that one game. Uh, Michael Clark has had a couple now, but obviously he's fully match fit. He's dubious. You've got Michael Johnson, who's looking doubtful, I guess, especially if he haven't found his towel. Uh, Johnny Goddard hasn't played in the last two. If he is carrying a knock, that is obviously a problem, and uh, it would appear that he is. And you've got three more players picked up slight, slight knocks on Tuesday as well. I mean, us three could end up on the bench. Well, <laughs> we'll do a job, Tabs. We'll do a job, mate. <laughs> Lee, Lee would be sent off within the first five minutes. I have no doubt about hey, that. Two and a half. Come on, give me some sort of credit. <laughs> um, yeah, no, definite selection issues. I mean, it's lucky we don't have a load of money sitting in our pockets to strengthen the squad with. Now, let's not talk about that. Um, but yeah, definite issues. But if you're Ian, I think we saw against Hungerford and Dulwich, um, changing the back line didn't help. I would go with the same back line if they're fit, if it's possible, go with at least the same back four as he did against Forest Green. I know they haven't been amazing lately, but you've got to stick with that. I think Michael Johnson, tricky. I wouldn't be surprised if we risk him or rush him back. Might be worth it. But then, as I said, the lone keeper coming into his own now. I think for me, Johnny Goddard, is going to be the real miss if he's not available. You know, he has been absolutely quality for us in the last month. Him, Banton, Vice, Jeffers, the way they linked up, absolutely superb. And as we mentioned, Akinola come in, Liam Soul coming in, they're not, they're not really of the quality to replace someone like Johnny Goddard. And that's not a slight on them. Goddard is an absolutely superb player. He's done it in the Football League. He's doing it in the National League South. They haven't got that experience. So if he's not available... That's going to be a miss. And also, again, <laughs> all these questions, the central midfield as well. What do we do there? We well, didn't play Nobby on Tuesday, of course. No. Um, so is he resting him for next week? Look, because there's two players you might... Michael Johnson, you might think, I've got, I can have nine <laughs> subs, which is practically half of St Albans. Um, so he got no problem in putting Boyce Clark on the bench. And, and if Michael breaks down in five minutes or 55 minutes, you've got a decent keeper to come on. Nobby, again, he might look, can I get 45? Can I get 60 out of him and see what I've got to replace him with? Yeah. I mean, and we, we have to say, Nobby had a brilliant game against Forest Green in the middle. You could tell he had that experience, that knowledge. Big game player. He did well. And I'm sure he'd be able to do it again on Monday night. But as I say, I'm sure Ian would be tempted. I think the one good thing about this game being on our TV, he's got that extra couple of days to try and get some of these players back fit or give them tests, get them ready got an extra session so hopefully the physio team they'll be ready work. buddy don't worry about that well, they'll be absolutely that, chomping at the bit that's the thing you know it's a local derby Monday night live on TV 1400 Saints fans what more motivation oh, are you getting me excited now what, Jacob oh what, come on what more motivation do you need absolutely none that adrenaline will sort of get you through half the game anyway just by yeah. itself yeah 1400 didn't you buy any for the home end Jake well, Bourne would release a statement last week saying they gave us 1,400, not 1,200. So, there you go. Plus, we'll have about 600 in the home end anyway, won't we? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> be they're spicy. Brave. They're braver than me if they go in there, <laughs> which isn't that hard. Um, the Woodside, they've got uh, three players who survived <laughs> us from the FA Cup time last time we met. Mark Ricketts, Kane Smith and David Stevens. And I think we've got three as well. We've got Tom Bender, David Noble, two don't know a play. And the other one, Zane Banton, we assume he's going to start. And a certain Sean Jeffers, who was on the other side. And didn't he win a dodgy penalty? He did win a dodgy penalty. Um, he dragged his foot into Tom Gardner's foot, which then went down. Some may perceive it that way, of course. That may not be true. He also <laughs> set up the third goal and uh, scored the second one. Same again on Monday, please, Sean. That would be very well. Then. No, oh, wait, no, no, for the Saints. Oh, for right. Oh, right. That's a good idea. Thank you. Yeah, good idea. But, it, 
Was he one of ours then, or one of theirs last time? Oh, who's who's is he? We've got those those young lads behind the goal. <laughs> exactly. Bloody hell, do they know with their their cans of Fosters? Come on, fellas. <laughs> Strong continental argot all the way. Yeah. Don't pollute yourself with that rubbish. Uh, you, I mean, we mentioned it briefly. All these links between the two clubs adds that extra layer, doesn't it? Of course, the obvious one is Ian Amundsen, and he's going to love it if he can give one over Danny Hunter. He'll love he'll, it. He'll absolutely he'll love, love it. it. But you've got the factors of Sean. He'll want to go back there and show what he could do. And James Comley, I'm sure, will want to come back to the prove it against the Saints. But it's made for comms, isn't it? It is, but I think it would be a huge risk for them to start him because how long has it been since he's played? Well, a game well it's interesting because they signed him before the Grimsby game last week and that got called off because of the storm damage for Stan Roof at Grimsby. I thought we damaged it when we went there. Um, so they, the best they do, I think, is stick him on the bench. Yeah. Uh, then because they haven't had a chance to look at him basically in no? probably 90 minutes this season. Mind no. you, everyone knows what he can do. Yeah. But, and to be fair, Luke Gerrard has been very busy taking the FA Cup to Tesco this week. So he's not had much time to do much else, really. So Other oh, supermarkets are available, Jacob. Come on. You know, this yeah. is a former Waitrose employee. Yeah. <laughs> Other FA Cups as well, Lee. They wouldn't risk a real one. <laughs> is that a slight on Tesco, Boreham Wood, or anyone else, Dave? Just the general public in Britain, really, Jacob. Ah, uh, OK. <laughs> it's probably a slight on Luke Garrard to be fair to you <laughs> it's going to melt it down for parts or something anyway <laughs> oh, they were they were still flogging tickets in the home end weren't they at Tesco on the yesterday of course so. they were they got they got no fans they got no fans they got no fans <laughs> in a way you've got to feel sorry for them because what they've done over the last Why? 20 years when, whatever anybody thinks of Danny Hunter the job he's done to that club is phenomenal the way he's built it up off the park and what they've achieved on the park. I mean, if they hadn't blown it two or three years ago, they'd be in the Football League now. They'd probably back down by now, but they, they would have gone into the Football League. It, it's phenomenal what they have achieved. And yet they don't get the recon- recognition from the people of the town. Sad. It, yeah, sad, but not too sad about it, I'm going to be honest. But as you say, he's done a brilliant there, and I'm sure that our owners would love to replicate that. But yeah, say... When you have a club like Arsenal that closely linked with your club, it's amazing the things that can happen and the improvements that come. So there you go. We have, we've had Watford. What, what have we got out of that over the last couple of years? Watford? <sighs> Kings Langley haven't done too badly. Oh, well, that, that, <coughs> that's true, actually. Yes, they've actually had some decent improvements there. <laughs> now, I've known you for a number of years, Dave, and that's probably the kindest thing you've ever said about Danny Hunter in your entire life, mate. No, yeah. well, um, <coughs> what he's done for the club, Billy. Always have done. Yeah. Um, when? There you go. You can't. Well, Ars- Arsenal gave him the pitch and one stand. The college gave him the other other stand. So you know, it's anyone could do that, mate. It's great. Does, does that mean Oakland's going to give us a stand? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I suppose <coughs> one, one fact we should also mention as well is the draw is before the game. Unlike the Monday cut Monday night game in the first round, which was afterwards. So, and when it's the third round as well, we'll, we'll soon find out who we've got. So, I'm sure the players won't want to know. I think Ian mentioned that in an interview with um, Neil, the Hearts ad, that he doesn't want the players to find out, but I'm sure they will. Um, they'll know. But, they'll know. Yeah, they'll know. But in 1924-25, had we oh gone God. through, we'd have played Newcastle United, the cup holders. 68-69, uh, if we'd gone through, we'd have played Tottenham Hotspur, won it three times in the previous six years. Uh, and then in 1980, if we'd gone through, we'd have played Barnsley. Well, I wouldn't mind our players. No, if, especially if it's a big tie. It just gives that yeah. extra impetus, doesn't it, to do well? Surely. Yeah. I, I don't understand them, Ian, not wanting them to know. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a good point. Especially when you form wood, they've got an experienced side. A lot of those lads, I'm sure, have played in big games. Whereas a lot of our lads haven't necessarily. They'll want to do it. And let's be honest, the Saints were the story of the first round, pretty much. Bar one or two other clubs. And look on all... Uh, Dave, you, you won't see it, but on all the social media and the FA Cup account on Twitter, it's 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 all got it's all got the Saints, it's all got Jeffers, it's all got Vice all over it, celebrating, getting ready for the second round. It's exciting. And Dave, you know, you mentioned that history, the players won't be it, but how rare are the Saints in the second round proper of the Emirates FA Cup? 90 minutes from the third round. What? This is amazing. Well, I think the players knowing actually probably won't make much difference at all. 
Um, because they're going to be so focused on that game, yeah. the players from both sides, they both know, crikey, we're going to be in the third round of the FA Cup if we win. Forget who you could be playing, because we're a bottom place club, no matter who we get, whoever we get is above us in the football ladder. Uh, and don't forget, Bournemouth, it's, how long is it since they were last in the third round of the FA Cup? Last January. <laughs> well, there you go. But I must admit, it's the only time I've been there. We still want more than us. <laughs> so, uh, t- so I could be going there two successive who, seasons. Who did they get last year? In the it's a game where probably the police were quite pleased that, and no crowds were allowed because they were at home to Millwall. Oh, <laughs> goodness me. Oh, I think they, they dodged a <laughs> bullet that day. But then they don't know that Lee would come into town on Monday. So there you go. Steady yeah. on. <laughs> Blimey. What, what I would say, though, is that all the fans that are going now are fortunate enough to get a ticket. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy yourselves because, you know, trust me, as a fan of 30 odd years, Dave of 130 odd years, um, <laughs> you, these opportunities don't come round too often. So go enjoy it, sing your hearts out, and uh, make sure you come home and your voice is just as hoarse as anything. So yeah. just give the lads all the possible support you can. Well, it's, it's your second time in the second <laughs> round, I guess, Lee. It's my third time. Jake's a virgin in the second round, I guess. I was thinking about this earlier. I've, I've dreamed of this. You know, it's been so, never, ever in the second round in my time being a City supporter. And it's just, as you said, Lee, make the most of it. It doesn't come along at all very often. And just make the noise. The fans, do your bit. Make the most of it. Make your presence known. And just let the players, you know, give the players all the inspiration that they need to provide a shock and get ourselves in the hat. Right, for the Forest Green Rovers game, the Podfiller Saints team, slightly generous maybe, produced a 32-page uh, PDF thing, all about sitting in the FA Cup and whatnot in that game. If you want a copy of that, then get on the email address, wherever it is here, on this video somewhere, or on the description, and uh, we'll email you a copy. Copy it. No, no cost. We won't chase you for merchandise or that sort of stuff. And also, there'll be one for the Bournemouth game, which should be available Saturday night as well, so if you want that... Again, just send an email in for request it. Three? You sure, Dave? I mean, can't we make a bit of buck out of this? No, no, no. We're, we're, uh, we're like that. Ah, uh, Dave. You're not normally this kind. <laughs> but people... So we, we were sort of talking about what side Ian should pick. Jake, do you want, do you want to give people our, our Twitter handle and people could perhaps tweet in what their team would be? Yep, at a pod full of Saints. Get involved. We'll be tweeting over the weekend, building the excitement up. Um, yeah, get involved. We'll We'll... Just yeah, and email us as well. We we love it again. Thank you everyone for getting so heavily involved with the, the podcast. Yes. Right? It's They're unbelievable, easy, please, aren't they? Good people are tweeting us and emailing us with all sorts of pleasantries. I know. I don't, Crazy. I don't know, I don't know why. Um, so because they like, love tabs. That's what it is. Well, yeah. 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 Well, we haven't finished with Bournemouth yet. Do you want your details on the match officials? I expect you both got them already. No. Nope. You're going to enjoy this. The referee is uh, Benjamin Speedy. We're not had him before. Two linos are Mark Stevens and David. Oh, I knew I shouldn't try that one. Truly Tr- even or something like that anyway. So it's always similar to mine. Um, the fourth official. This will raise a smile. David Rock. <laughs> oh, Who was ready yeah. last time we played Bournemouth in the FA Cup? Oh, come I on. thought you were going to say Steve Trulock at one point there. That was, uh... <laughs> no, he wants somebody who gets out of centre circle. Goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> Can't we have JJ O'Donnell's brother as full official? He's he's much better. <laughs> well, I don't know, mate. I don't know. <laughs> True. <laughs> but for those of you who don't know, David Rock was a referee for the game last time we had Bournemouth in the Cup. Ian was not impressed with him. Um, apparently, I don't think, like a few. few understatement. <laughs> I, I don't think anyone was particularly impressed with him that day in the ground. A goal clear foul on Bender for one of the goals as well. And all the big decisions did seem to go against us. So it's rather pleasing to see him at fourth official, not first official. So we've got to hope the referee doesn't get injured yes. at any point, really. So please don't get injured. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dearie me. Right. Okay. Oh, God. Okay. God. Um, <clears throat> hey, and yeah, all those new Saints fans, enjoy Borenwood. It's quite a place. I mean, be nice when it's finished. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't. Anyone drinking before the game, I wouldn't suggest doing it in Bournemouth. Maybe stay to St Albans. Like, don't don't go there unless you have to. I know. I know. Dave's bring this riot shield with him just in case. 
It's just going to be a great occasion. Just hope everybody enjoys it on both sides and let's hope we see a great game. Yeah, and hopefully everyone behaves as well. Oh, yes, Jacob. Just talking. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you. Do we have to do predictions for this game? I don't know if Might we can. Well. Go on then. <sighs> <laughs> this is going well. Yes. Uh, what do you think, Tavs? Come on, you're always putting us on the on the spot, mate. I've got too much respect for this blooming Woodside, I'm afraid. I think it could be a bridge too far for us. Uh, but I'd love to be proved wrong. Yeah. I tell you, for my worst football in down my life was in 1971 against this <laughs> lot. So it would be nice to finally get payback for that game. We did it. <laughs> We got payback against Forest Green Rovers, so come on, let's do it against Bournemouth now. That's a, that's a great point. It's the season for it. I'm going to, fine, that's giving me optimism. I'm going to go 2-1 Saints. Well, my reverse psychology worked last time, so against Oxford, so I'm going to say we lose 3-0. Ooh, love that. Mm, on that well, note. Yeah. On. <laughs> Leave them laughing, Lee. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> hey, that's my motto, fella. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, again, thanks everyone to watch. I, I mean, I want to say good luck to the lads and Ian on Monday. Massive game. Common boys, we can do it. And yeah, thank you for everyone getting involved. And we will see you um, next time. Thanks so much, everyone. <laughs> Enjoy it, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye, everyone.